This is favors, financial topics, various topics. So anxious and ambivalent uh, or insecure attachment. An anxious, ambivalent child is insecurely attached. The child exhibits the following attachment behaviors. Expresses distress when strangers are near, nearby and when they are in unfamiliar settings, whether the parent or caregiver is nearby or not. Exhibits extreme anxiety and distress when the parent departs and, re, and resists re, reuniting when the parent returns. Parent responds to child on his or her schedule, own schedule rather than on the schedule of the infant. So this could be interpreted as the, the uh, say for instance, the parents of the child had to switch who would stay at the home and who would not who will go out to work. And if one of the parents was the primary caregiver for five years taking care of the child in the home, and then that parent decided, okay, I wanna to return to work, then there's going to produce some, some distress because then the father is really now the stranger. The father was the one who was going out and working and coming home and the baby or the child knew or had a sense of when the uh, parent, when the father would come home. Well, the roles are switched. So then, the father now has to has to begin uh, creating and maintaining an affectional bond with the child while he's now a stay-at-home dad. He becomes the new stranger, and so then the child would cry because mom is leaving. Right, mom is leaving out the door. And so then now the child has to kind of um, sort of adjust. He has to, the child has to adjust. So now he's gonna be looking for mom coming home, right? If you grow up in a background that is not economically um manageable maybe the background is poor or something like that you're going to always uh have parents who respond to a child on his or her own schedule rather than on the schedule of the infant and in this case to a child so like i said i was a latchkey kid i had to gather my little brother from school and then then we had to go to the nursery to go get the uh, uh uh the baby which i believe was a toddler at that time and go into the house and lock the door behind us and don't open the door anymore of course we opened the door you know but i had to do that and so when you have a single parent um that parent doesn't have the time to respond to the child or children on the schedule of the child. The parent has to work. So needs that you have as a child cannot be met when you need them. You have to wait. You have to wait until that parent becomes available, whether emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually, whether that parent becomes available. And so then when you put money, add money to the context, you'll see this a lot, um, that you have a parent with three kids, or th let's just say two kids. One, the parent always gives to, gives money to, responds to the needs of the of that child who's now an adult. So that child feels secure with that parent. But then you will have another child the parent only responds to that child based upon the parent's schedule and not necessarily the child who is now an adult as well. And that person would be insecure. They would, that person would have an insecure attachment with that parent. And it happens all the time because a lot of times parents think that the good girl or the good boy can handle himself or herself and they don't really need the parents. But those are the people who actually need the parents probably more than the one who one who keeps asking for money but has no purpose, right? Doesn't look like he's going to have any purpose or she doesn't have any purpose and just wants the money. They don't want instruction. 
They don't want you to direct them. They don't want you to tell them what to do with the money. They just want the money. So you can have a parent who responds uh, uh, securely or, or insecurely and or insecurely to two different kids. And adding money to the mix reveals too, sort of like uh, which one has an insecure attachment, which one has a secure attachment. All right, hopefully you were able to gain some insight from this series topic. Like, subscribe, and visit. Like the video, hit the notification bell for future videos. You can visit my website, which is still in, in development, reginawhyfavors.com. You can always email me with a question, reginawhyfavors at yahoo.com. You will be able to purchase the book by the end of October 2021. I'm hoping that I will have it completed um, completely revised rather. Uh, it is already written and done. I just have to edit it. Uh, it is overcoming setback five keys for entering and exiting correction. Thank you for visiting the channel. Coming soon is my new book that I am working on presently and hope to complete by the end of the year. Um, December 2021, uh, preferably February, uh, February 2022, and that is Favors Financial Recovery, Psychological Approaches to Overcoming Financial Setback with some workbook book elements. So it is the heart, it, it will be the uh, book that will support the audio series, although I have developed the audio series prior to actually writing the book. So be on the lookout for this new book when it comes out. When I finish, I will create an audio introduction to the book. Thank you again for visiting the channel.